everybody, it's me, Margaret, and I'm here with some actual yarn work, completed yarn work. I talked about this baby blanket before. It's called the Triangles Baby Blanket. I hope you can actually see the little triangles in here. I can't remember the designer's name, but I'm definitely going to link this free pattern in the description box below because it was a joy to do. And if I hold it like this, you'll say, oh, what a good job you did, Margaret, but I actually didn't. Now, it is very unusual for me to let major mistakes go unfixed. I don't know if you can actually see my mistakes in this blanket. I'll, I'll see if I can get some still shots to show it off, but bottom line is I was making this for a doll. Another reason I was doing this is because I needed to have a longer project that um, I just didn't want to make decisions. <laughs> So I was working on a project that took a little bit longer to do. That's very unusual for me because I like shorter projects as a rule. But this is an excellent knit. It's, it is fun to do. And be sure to mark each of the six rows. Like each time you complete a row, make sure you mark it because even though it's a simple pattern, I didn't mark it right at first because I knew I would remember where I left off. And it was a little bit trickier for me to find what you, to look at my work, to read my work and find out where I left off. So I ended up making a mistake that way. So I got my sticky notes out and I marked it from there and I didn't have any problems. So do be sure that, you know, don't, don't try to rely on your memory. But, um, but I did enjoy it. And this person has several other baby blanket patterns that I'd also like to try as well. So I'll be looking for another pattern by this designer because this one was so great. Loved it. And remember, I'm continuing on with my craft from Stash 2020. So I did not buy any yarn from this, this was, for this. This was um, Gloria by Canon, which is a Big Lots yarn that I got for a dollar a while back. So I had to use uh, two skeins of this, I think, is all I used on it. It's a DK weight. Very easy to work with. I actually loved working with it. And you can't say the same for most dollar yarns. And sometimes there's even expensive yarns that you don't enjoy working with as well. So celebrate when you get a cheap one like that that's fun, feels good, washes up great. The two thumbs up from me. So then I went rooting through my stash and I found, I had a good bit of this. It's a cotton yarn. It's that sugar and cream, Lily Sugar and Cream, which is an inexpensive yarn. And this is the color called Country Stripes. And I did this video a while back where I showed about cotton yarns that fade. These inexpensive kitchen cottons, they fade horribly. So I knew this was not going to be a good choice because as soon as I wash it, the colors are going to fade upon one another. But I just wanted to do something with it, so I started to play along. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a future clip in this video, so hang on. And then, still rooting through my stash and still on a cotton kick, I got to this, I found this Cotton Ease. It's actually something by Lion Brand. I had never seen it before and it is old, come to find out, discontinued. This came from a Goodwill haul that I did a while back. Got these great big bags from Goodwill and you just didn't know what was gonna be in all of it and it was two skeins of this yarn. Love working with this. Do not like working with this Lily Sugar and Cream. And that's probably why it's been sitting in my stash for so long is because I, I just don't enjoy working with it. But this was great. Not sure why it was discontinued, but I'm sure Lime Brand has something similar. You know how they seem to just discontinue things and break them back and, and call them something different? I don't know, but I, I'm anxious to see if I can find something that's similar to this because it's an awesome yarn. So what I made with that is this little hat. Now this stitch right here, the name of it is escaping me. I did not use a pattern, but I think it's called a seed stitch. Basically what you're doing is a double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet. And then when you get to the next row, you do a single crochet on top of the previous double 
and then a double crochet on top of the previous single. So you do the same thing. You're just alternating, you know, double and single all the way around. You just make sure you do it in reverse on the following row. Simple, 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 except for maybe the increases at the top, and that could get tricky. I have seen tutorials on hats similar to this, and I'm thinking about doing a tutorial myself because this part up here is not explained well in the tutorials that I have seen. Let me clarify that. I, I haven't seen all of them, I'm sure. And once you understand the concept, you can actually apply it to other things in case you're wanting to do your own designing. If you like this texture, then this might be a hat for you, and I, I really do like it. Not only does I, do I think it feels good, but it lends itself well to cotton, and not all crochet stitches do well in cotton, I have found. Um, but this, this, is, this is a good one. I like it. And then last but not least, I got a special knit crate. Now this was last month's knit crate, which was May. Is that right? Yeah. May 2020 knit crate. And you might look at that and say, well that just looks like some average merino wool or whatever it is. And it does appear that way, but what they also sent you was Kool-Aid and a zip tie. So what does that sound like you're going to do? <laughs> it's dyeing process. And you probably have seen her before, Rebecca from Kim Knits. She does a tutorial in conjunction with Knit Crate to uh, show you how to do some Kool-Aid dyeing. And a word about these Kool-Aid, make sure that you use these to dye with, but not to drink. They are loaded with chemicals that are hazardous on different types of, uh, for different types of ways. Um, red number 40, for example, we don't give that to children. That cre creates hyperactivity, and especially kids that may be sensitive to it, it could create some really bigger problems, lack of focus altogether, some, uh, a lot of things. And believe you me, I've studied this said it's extensively because my own child, my youngest, has ADHD pretty severely and we that's how I learned about all this stuff is because we cleaned up the diet in order to keep him off some medicine or at least keep down the dosage of the medicine. But um, you know the European Union has uh, or at least the UK has banned a lot of these artificial colors and uh, preservatives and things like that. Unfortunately here in the United States we just keep putting this poison in everything. I'm going to link an article down below so you can kind of get a quick overview of what it is. And then, of course, you could do your own research. But just a heads up. But I am looking forward to trying this. So I have only dyed things one other time, and it was not all that successful. And I've learned that it's messy, and I wasn't sure if I really wanted to ever do it again. But in this case, I think I do. I'm going to give it a try. Also in that knit crate was this really cute little post-it notes thing with the, looks like a, a smiley face, if you can see it. And when you open it up, it's just a little collection of sticky notes. And besides having being able to make little notes for any purpose under the sun, even while you're knitting or crocheting, these make excellent row markers when you're following a pattern. This is exactly what I use um, to know where, where I left off. I want to thank those of you who um, checked in on me. Uh, it has been a minute since I put a video up, and there have been reasons why <laughs> since we moved to Texas. Well, you need to know, we're living in a 55 and older community, and it's the brochures say it's resort living, active senior living, and it's true. <laughs> Even though we moved in right after the pandemic shut down, we have really enjoyed being here. Not everything is open. We can't do all the things that are actually available here to us in this neighborhood, but we have been doing the things that are slowly opening again. And so I got the bright idea that I would do a uh, day in my life type vlog, but that's hard. I'm not very good at that. Why? <laughs> at all, but I did try. So I'm going to insert a little clip right here of one, let's see, I think it was last Monday morning. I just want you to understand that I've been kind of go, go, going, and also I have to remember to take it easy, so I'm also forcing myself to do some more resting. All this means that I rarely have makeup on my face, and 
I don't feel comfortable sitting down and doing a video where I'm talking like this without my makeup on my face because it's almost like no makeup is a private thing. <laughs> At least that's how I've always thought about it. And not just me, a lot of people were brought up to function that way too. But I did do a little bit with no makeup on and I was going to actually show you uh, a clip. Well, let me show you this pretend version of a vlog. On this particular day, I got up at 5.30 because I had an outdoor boot camp at 8 a.m. Now, I eventually make my way to the kitchen where my three fuzzies join me for their breakfast. I turn on the coffee machine and head to the pantry for pet food. I bought these Dollar Tree baskets when we moved to Atlanta and I'm still using them for pet supplies. It works great. I noticed that the cats needed more crunchies in their bowl and this is one way that cats differ from dogs. They need to have food available 24-7 because they eat when they want. I keep it on this shelf because cat food is bad for dogs and Bentley would gobble it up if he had the chance. My kitties like a little wet food in the morning so that's what's going on here. Now I can make my coffee. Then everybody likes to go outside for a bit of detective work to see what's transpired overnight. Pretty sky this morning. I truly prefer black coffee, but in dealing with Lyme disease, I've added a few things. This is collagen powder and it's totally tasteless. Lime boogers break down collagen, so this helps repair and restore those damaged connective tissues. And as for my brain, I need to add a little healthy fat, especially on workout days. Now this is a keto creamer that does just that, but it's clumpy, so don't try to use it if you don't have any handy dandy tiny whisks like this. But before I can have that first delicious sip, I force down a cup of water. Now here's where I'm going to sit this morning to quietly read my messages and my comments, but I'll sit here with no lights on. All my life I've been a huge breakfast eater. Couldn't function till I had something in my system, but oddly in recent years I can barely get anything down before about 10 a.m. Usually this isn't a problem, but this morning I'm working out at 8 a.m. Eggs have the perfect ratio of macronutrients, equal parts fat, carbs, and protein, so I can manage one egg. Yes, I use butter, albeit too much here because I'm used to cooking more than one egg, so oh well. And if you're thinking about lecturing me on eating a low-fat diet, don't bother. Science has told us not to do that for years, so do your research before you get all sassy on me and remember that I don't debate politics, religion, or nutrition. But you could start your own YouTube channel and share your beliefs there. And I'm so glad my grandmother can't see me do this, but why dirty a plate for only one egg? Ooh, good morning, little tomato plant family. And I walked right past my fabric that came in yesterday, but now that I'm awake, let's investigate. This is going to recover that chair upstairs. It's kind of a gray bluish color. And I like it. Time to get ready for boot camp. Now clearly, I'm still not ready to do much talking at this point, so continuing with the voiceover. I'm using a little dry shampoo here. Not the expensive one. This is um, Not Your Mother's Dry Shampoo. But I also like Dove. Actually, my hair doesn't need washing, but it just needs a little lift at the crown. And I do like this fresh scent. I section it off and spray the roots and work it in a bit. Now I'm going to leave it alone and let it dry. It doesn't take very long, but anyway. So I'll look like an old witch for a few minutes. Apparently a grumpy old witch. Taming those bangs a bit. Now some facial sunscreen. Now this has been a challenge as I age. My sensitive skin can only tolerate certain sunscreens, plus I need moisture as my skin is getting drier. So I spent too much on this Kiehl's, I think you pronounce it like that, Super Multi Corrective Cream with SPF 30. I should have done my hair at this point to get it out of the way, but this works too. I never claim to be a beauty vlogger. Leaning over and get my hands under my bangs, smear that stuff all over my face, and flip back the witchy hair. Now I put the cheap stuff everywhere else. I really like this Neutrogena Dry Touch formula, and 
I give it extra points because it doesn't have that strong sunscreen smell. But then I put it all over my exposed skin just like anybody would do. Now I want to wash my hands and I'm using this body wash as hand soap because it's too strong smelling for body wash. It's Dr. Teal's charcoal detox or something like that and it smells like men's Axe deodorant that Thomas used to use when he was in the 8th grade. I love all the other Dr. Teal scents though. Now this is tricky. I want the sunscreen on the backs of my hands but not on the palms so I do the best I can to achieve that goal and my goodness I sure hope we do some much needed arm work in boot camp today. I don't actually wear makeup to work out but there are a few things I do to make myself presentable. As we age we fade. When your eyebrows, lips, and skin all fade to the same color you take on an unhealthy pallor. Now, I don't want to look dead, so I grabbed my beloved Too Faced Natural Matte Palette that Maggie gave me for a Mother's Day one year, and I used this color here to bring back some eyebrows. Ah, click on the lighted 10x magnifying mirror, another aging trick. I have a proper eyebrow pencil that I, I really like, but I save that for when I'm actually doing my makeup and I need it to last. Eyeshadow is cheaper, quick option, works fine for this purpose. Nothing dramatic here, and it's just that humans are supposed to have eyebrows. So I filled them in, and if I were a proper beauty vlogger, I'd have proper lighting so you could actually see the difference. Then I grabbed the blush brush and add a couple of swipes with whatever was left on the brush from when I used it last. On to the hair. Now I desperately need a haircut, but I'm waiting to time it just right because of the wedding. So let's just wrap this stuff up in a braid, get it out of the way, and off my neck. Add the ponytail holder, make a space at the nape of my neck, and stuff the end under there. I can't see any of this process, and I don't care, as I'm just going to work out. And it's more about function than form. I just kind of feel around back there and make sure it's secure. Now this is my favorite tip to share with you. Spray your hair in your shower so you never get that hairspray fallout on your floor or wall or whatever's behind you. It works great for spray sunscreen too. Almost done. Simple pearl earrings. Brush my teeth and add my Burt's Bees Tinted Lip Balm in the color Rose. I keep my mat and bag in the hall closet. Fix my water and I found this awesome insulated bottle at Target. It's got like a bottle like top that closes which I really like and I usually drink lemon water but I need to make up a new batch so just plain filtered water today. So in case you're wondering what's in my exercise bag that I take with me to boot camp, I have a towel. I got my stretchy bands which are you know resistance bands and I have my one pound bean bag weights that I made. I have some three pound hand weights, but I am not ready for those. I have to be careful with my joints. So in this is some aquarium gravel that Louise sent when she made Thomas's weighted blanket. And I have weighed it out and I made two bean bags out of some scrap fabric. And so I got one pound weights. So that works really well. Oh, there's another resistance band in here. All of these resistant ba resistance bands give me different types of resistance. So based on how I'm you know, progressing, I can move up. And then I have my money because it's $4 for every class. And the golf cart key goes in there, but I'm not driving today. Diana is my next door neighbor. Quick check of the weather, looking good. He's very hopeful, but he doesn't like Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. And there's my ride. And here's where we're working out until we go back to the gym. We have all fitness levels in this little class, and I'm somewhere in the upper middle of the pack. This is our trainer's backyard, and speaking of her, she's older than I am and can literally run circles around me. She's positive and funny, and she's undergoing chemo right now. She's the most inspirational woman I've met in a long time. So I just got back 
from boot camp. And now it's time for Bentley to walk me. See how he's got the leash in his mouth? See if I can get where you can see. <laughs> so it was here at this point when I kind of forgot that I was supposed to be vlogging. <laughs> So I came home, I walked the dog, I took a bath, I fixed myself some lunch, and then by this time, I knew what was facing me later on. I had to go to Pickleball Academy. Now in order to participate in, in the pickleball activities here, uh, you they require you to attend this three-night academy, so to speak. It, it was fun. I met a lot of nice people, too. They basically teach you the, the, the rules, the ground strokes, the, all the basics of the game so that you can begin to play. And everybody is rated, so when you first graduate from Pickleball Academy, <laughs> you're in a D level. So we're all beginners. But those who have who are better at it and are ready to challenge up can, and then they can get in to higher groups and play with people that are a little bit more uh, along their skill level, which Tucker will be doing, as a matter of fact. And if you don't know what pickleball is, it's actually a, um, it's about a quarter of a tennis court, Your the court, pickleball court is. You generally play it with doubles, although you can play it with singles, and it's a lot less running, but you're using a, a paddle that looks like a very large ping pong paddle, maybe something along the lines of a racquetball size. And then you have a wiffle ball that you're playing with, you know, the, the plastic ball with holes in it. But it's, it's a fun little game and you get your exercise, get you out there playing, meeting people and whatever. So I knew that I had Pickleball Academy coming up after in this particular night. So because of my health situation, I made myself go lie down and take a nap. <laughs> And then I woke up for my afternoon coffee and this. Time for my afternoon coffee break. So I'm sitting down here in my recliner with this Lily's Sugar and Cream. And I've had a bunch of this color in my stash for a really long time. I don't enjoy working with this. It's very stiff yarn and I know that it's going to fade. All the different colors are going to fade all over each other. So I never knew what to do with it. But do you see that painting over there? That is the inspiration piece. I have a collection of uh, these by this artist, and it's the inspiration piece for my accent colors in this room. I'll be recovering all these pillows in this couch to bring out the colors in this painting. And these happen to be the different colors in that painting, which is pretty handy. So just to get rid of it, I'm making a little mat to go on one of the pet beds over there and we'll, we'll see how it turns out. However, I'm finding it very frustrating. I, look at this end. Can you see how crooked it is? I cannot figure out what I have done. I'm counting stitches and I don't see where I've made a mistake. This side looks pretty straight, but what on earth happened over here? I don't know, but it's of course just gonna be for the pet bed, so We'll see. Gosh, the colors keep changing. I'm using my phone to film this, but that seems more accurate. So now it's 5.30 in the afternoon. I'm getting ready to go to Pickleball Academy. <laughs> so I'm going to repeat the process that I did this morning at 7.30 for getting ready to go to Pickleball. we got to do this from 6 to 8 o'clock in the nighttime, which is like really late for me. <laughs> And here's one thing I'm doing differently than I did this morning. I knew I wasn't going to be in direct sun this morning, but today I am. So I have my 30 sunscreen on my face, and now I'm putting a little bit of this BB cream that has a little sunscreen in it too. So that means I've got double sunscreen. Now I did this yesterday with um, the number 50 <laughs> makeup. What was that? It Cosmetics. I hate that stuff. This stuff. I bought this. It was highly recommended by people on YouTube, by my daughter, by my sister. SPF 50 It CC Cream. And I think it's incredibly thick. I end up looking um, 
I don't know. I just think I look like I'm so made up. So I don't really like it. But I thought, oh, this will be great. I'll use it as a sunscreen too. But I still got pink. That's okay. <laughs> Tucker's getting ready too <laughs> because we're going to Pickleball Academy. Um, so anyhow, I didn't want to put this on again. I don't know when I'm going to use this up, but it feels great and it does have a good sunscreen, but it's too thick. And then because I'm going to be in direct sunlight, we're just getting a ponytail and a hat so that uh, I can keep some of this off of me. So this active a senior adult living is a real thing and it's wearing me plumb out. But you can see why makeup is not conducive to my lifestyle now because I'm constantly sweating and active and out and about and that is so unusual for me. So I have to get in the habit of understanding that I don't always have to have my makeup on <laughs> to uh, be out and about because nobody else has their makeup on so it's okay I guess. It's kind of like you're on vacation. And if you were going to the beach, you wouldn't be putting your makeup on, right? So it's similar to that. If you're going out to play tennis, nope. So pickleball, no makeup either. So there you go. So off we go to Pickleball Academy. So right now, the things on my list are all fun things. I'm not heading any committees. I'm not running anything or revamping any kind of um, parent programs like I've done in the past. No major responsibilities. We are living the retirement life, but it's fun and I like it a lot. And I'm really looking forward to when uh, things become opening up. Um, as a matter of fact, the Anana completely other day, we thought we'd go out and hit a couple of large baskets baskets of golf balls on the practice range. So we headed out to do that. So I waited in the golf cart while Tucker went in and paid for our balls uh, because we forgot the credit card. You, could, you can do that at the vending machine, but we forgot. Then when we got to the vending machine, there were no baskets. There were no buckets there. Now that should have been foreshadowing, but we were too hopeful. So <laughs> Tucker went and got the balls and got the baskets and we went back to the vending machine and this is what happened. And that was before our pickleball week, so we still haven't gotten out there to hit those balls yet, uh, but, but we'll, we'll do that. My daddy was a golf pro, and so I am looking forward to getting back into it. Of course, the weather has kicked up now. We are in full-blown summer-type temperatures. It was supposed to be a heat index of 105 today. So that presents a problem. I only want to be out in the early mornings. So, um, you know, it, well, I guess I could do late at night, but I'm tired late at night. So, you know, it's that conundrum. That is the arts. Now, that's the fitness center. Where's the arts center? There's the creative arts center is right there. I think there's a quilters group. I don't think they have any fashion sewing people, but... And I totally forgot to tell you that at some point, I think it was last week, we got the couch and the chair from Maggie. And it was much bigger than I thought. This is where I was sitting right here a minute ago when I was filming. Had that light and the natural light from the window providing my light. You can see the, the um, what is that called? tripod right there and I now sit in that chair in the morning time when I uh, wake up and go through my messages and stuff. I like the setup very much and there were several of you who offered some good suggestions that I may be trying.
as far as my furniture arrangement goes. So I did move a lot of my yarn into this thing right here. And uh, that freed up some room in the closet. So that's, that's good. But this is working out pretty well. I, I think I like this and I may be living with this setup for a little while. Now, this is the chair that I was thinking would probably look better in that corner. This is a Queen Anne, belonged in, it was in my family for ages, it was my grandmother's. And I've had it recovered once, but the blue-gray fabric over here that I showed you earlier in an earlier clip, that is what I'm going to recover this chair with, and I'm not sure if it's going to stay here or go downstairs. It also has with it two ottomans, and those ottomans are in bad shape, so they have to be not only recovered, but repaired. But in the meantime, Buzzy loves it. Several of you, I've got my cord here, several of you had talked about this closet. Um, you suggested that we, I think Marsha had a great suggestion because she had some, something similar in her house with her washer and dryer set up. They removed this door and they used a, um, a blind to access her washer and dryer, which was awesome. But this leads to my attic, and my attic is not heated and cooled. And then somebody else suggested taking the door off and reversing it so that it opened to the inside. But that won't work either because you see how it's built up like that? No, don't go in there. It's built funny. It's a step up into it. So um, I'm kind of stuck needing to be able to access this door. Now we can get in and out of it just fine with this large piece of furniture here, but when it comes time to get the Christmas tree items out and stuff like that, then we're going to have to actually move this over. <laughs> And with those little furniture slotty things, that should be fine. And then, of course, we've got the wedding going on. So tomorrow is Maggie's virtual wedding shower. And the way that is, they sent the, the invitations out, and people sent their gifts. And then we'll all be together virtually on a Zoom Hangout or Google Hangout or something, whatever they do to set that up. Now, of course, I'll be over there with Maggie, and a few of our closest friends will be there that are more like family. Anyway, just a handful of people, and then we'll get to see everybody else virtually. So we have that going on tomorrow as well. I've started the antique lamp makeover. Several of you, including my sister, wondered about leaving it as it is, sort of like a shabby chic vibe. Well, the main problem is that this paint is literally flaking off, and it's been so long since it's been painted. I'm wondering if there could possibly be lead in this paint. So I'm going to be stripping it off best I can. This part down here is really flaking off. You can see all that right there. And looking at the underside, it appears to have been blue and maybe white at one time. But you can tell it's iron because you can see the rust underneath there. I wish I could see what was under that paint. And then this um, cord that you run through here has been painted in place. So now I've got to pry that out so we can get it off. Yeah, it's coming off easy enough. cooking going on. What are you making? Chocolate chip cookies. Oh, that's, that's not on my diet, you realize. Well, why did you request them? Because they're so <laughs> tasty. <laughs> I know. I've got to keep my hands out of them. But what, what's that recipe you're using over there? Chewy chocolate chips. Where'd you get it? You gave it to me. <laughs> He's now, with his newfound retirement activities, He's now diving into my old recipes. So, um, I don't know. Tell, so tell us. One day you were going to make some chocolate chip cookies and you went in there and there were no chocolate chips. Thomas ate them all. The whole the bag? The whole bag. Probably in one sitting. And what did you say? Who ate my chocolate chips? <laughs> no, you didn't. You said to me, Thomas ate my chocolate chips. <laughs> Here they are. 
we tried them out and they are very good. He did a great job. I love his new hobby. And tonight's dinner is Mahi Mahi with a lemon garlic sauce, Parmesan potatoes, and green beans from the can. So I'm gonna look through my phone and I'll look into this camera on this SD card and see what footage do I have because I think about you and making videos all the time. It's just a matter of actually sitting down in front of the camera when I'm looking presentable enough <laughs> actually say anything that I think may interest you you know and I think with my life making a pivot into this much more active lifestyle that I may end up pivoting my channel to have a little bit more of this uh, active kind of stuff in there I don't know I don't know if it's even worth bringing up because in truth hasn't my channel just kind of been a catch-all or a, of, of everything <laughs> You never know what you're going to get when you sign on. <laughs> so uh, thank you for those people who have been longtime subscribers. And if this is something you want to watch, well, welcome to the new subscribers. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>